So as a breeder, in my opinion, working dogs are greatly undervalued. They're of huge value, not only in the labour saving aspect of, of the equation. You settle, mate. They're ready to go any time you want. They're very cheap to maintain. Some working dogs, the, the, some of the, the better ones, are selling for, you know, twenty to $35,000. But the dog is going to work for you for the next 10 years. Doesn't ask for a pay rise, doesn't worry about the weather, just is happy to be with you and, and just loving life. Hey, look at you. Look at him, huh? Beautiful. As they get a bit older, we'll just start turning them gently onto the back like that and letting them get used to that and the restraint. Um, so here's a lovely little male red and tan pup. Both the, the mother and the father are black and tan, so we're lucky we've got so many red and tans in, in this litter. When we breed a litter of pups, you never know where they're going to be in 12 months' time, how, how quickly they're going to develop. If you use a working dog in the correct manner, it just becomes that little bit easier. So slowly, stock work goes from quite a chore and something that is, is quite stressful and hard tack material to just beautiful, calm, satisfying, productive, uh, low stress for yourself, the dog and the stock. Okay, so here we've got young Trunk and we'll just see how she goes. She's unsure of herself, so I just create a little bit of movement here with the sheep. That will get the instinct going and off she goes. So all I'm gonna do is use the rake if she comes in a little bit close and has a little bit of a nip. I can manipulate which way she goes, left or right. So if I want to get her going anti-clockwise, I'll just block the clockwise side and that, then she'll choose to go anti-clockwise and vice versa. All I want to do is let her instinct come out and build her confidence up and make sure that she or the sheep don't get hurt. That's very important at this stage. In our clinics we talk a lot about building respect and being a good pack leader if you like. So a lot of people are always trying to tell their dog what to do. And the dog actually won't do what that person wants to do until it sees them as a good leader and making good decisions and rates them as someone that they should be listening to. We always get the, the, the question from people, why won't my dog listen to me? And it's because you have nothing good to say. And so once the person starts making good calls, then everything changes and the dog starts barracking and working with that person.